name is Jana Wolf, registered dietitian and director of nutrition at GBMC's Comprehensive Obesity Management Program. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We have our sleeve chef here. He's going to be cooking up an awesome meal um, specifically for bariatric patients. It has high protein, lots of nice, deep, leafy greens. So without further ado, I am going to hand it over to our sleeve chef. Thank you so much, Jenna. You're welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Salomon. I am the sleeve chef. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. This is our very first live GBMC Comp Sleeve Chef event. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this evening, a little bit about myself first. I graduated from the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York in 2004. Uh, I worked in the restaurant industry throughout Maryland. Uh, and, you know, sort of growing up being a foodie, I loved food and I ate a lot. Uh, so I joined the comp program back in, uh, some, um, back in January of 2016. Uh, I had a sleeve gastrectomy done by the great Gustavo Bello, uh, September 2nd, 2016. And I just, I love cooking. You know, it's been an incredible process so far. You guys are great. I love interacting with everybody on the comp Facebook page. So, hey, without further ado, enough talk. I think we're going to, uh, we're going to get cooking here. So first we're going to talk about our tuna, talk about our ingredients. So we've got ahi tuna. This is fresh ahi tuna. It's delicious. Great for you. High in protein. Simple to cook, easy to cook. So we're going to take a little extra virgin olive oil. We're going to add it right to our tuna here. And we're going to give it a rub. Add a little kosher salt and black pepper on top. Very important to make sure you season both sides of your food. How many ounces do you think that is? So that is four ounces of tuna. Great question, Janet. Mm -hmm. So three to four ounces. That's about that's about how much. Um, three to four ounces is about how much you should be having per meal. That's about twenty to thirty grams of protein. Correct. Yes. That is exactly why we are going with that amount. Right. And tuna's great too. It's lean. It's high in protein. Really good for you. Uh, also, we're going to be doing a little sautéed red Swiss chard with ginger, garlic, and scallion. Or sorry, ginger and garlic. So we'll start off here by cutting our veg. So we're going to mince our ginger, we're going to mince our garlic, and we are going to slice our Swiss chard. So what you want to do when you're cutting, you're going to be very, very careful here, everybody. You want to make sure that the side of the knife goes up against the side of, against your middle finger knuckle. So go very slow, nice and easy. Go. Through here as well. You want to mince it up in small pieces. And ginger has some really good um, anti-inflammatory and GI, like for your stomach if you're nauseous. It's very good for your stomach as well. Some exactly. good properties. Exactly. And you guys out there in Facebook land, if you have any questions while uh, Michael's cooking, um, just post them to the page. I see All a right. couple people join. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, so we're doing the same thing for our garlic. We're just mincing our garlic. Again, being very careful. Mind those knuckles. Keep your fingertips tucked in. Keep your fingers curled in while you're slicing. Very, very important. Go nice and slow. You're first starting out. I realize I forgot to talk about our dish. We are doing a pan seared tuna. It's going to be served over sauteed red Swiss chard with some garlic, ginger, and it's going to be finished with a little fresh hit of lime juice. It's going to be delicious. Yum. All right, so as you can see, we've got our pan nice and hot here. This pan, cast iron pan, I definitely recommend cast iron. Cast iron will transfer heat a lot better, it will also hold heat. We're going to start off, this, our saute pan here is over a medium heat, got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there. Our smoking pan here, pan searing is a high heat cooking technique, which is why we have our pan on high, which is why you see some of the smoke coming off. All right, so we're going to start by adding our ginger and our garlic to our saute pan. 
So we have a couple of people. This is awesome. Hi, Christina. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Deborah. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, and this is going to start to smell really good. Yeah, you're going to start to... we got to put the smell vision in, guys. This is going to start to <laughs> smell really good. So when you're cooking, you want to... You want to use all your senses when you're cooking. You want to smell as that garlic and this ginger starts to perfume. Now you know we're ready to start adding our Swiss chard. We'll start off by adding our stems. We'll saute those. As always, if you feel like you're getting a little low on oil in your pan, you can always add a little bit more fat. Extra virgin olive oil. It's great for you. It's hot. So you've got three different types of fat. Yes. Yeah. Monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and what's the third one? Uh, you said monounsaturated, oh, yeah. polyunsaturated, and then we've got our good old saturated fat. Saturated, bags. of course. That's the one I always forget about because it's not like as healthy. But um, yeah, the monounsaturated has some really great um, properties to it, and um, it can help with cardiovascular um, benefits as well. Exactly. So thank you. This is good. I'm, learn I'm remembering back to like my nutrition years <laughs> <laughs> when I was in school. Okay, this is starting to smell really oh, good. Yeah. So what we're looking to do here, everybody, is we're just looking to make, we're just looking to saute our Swiss char stems. So you want them to become a little softer, a little translucent. We cook the ginger and the garlic for about a minute and a minute to a minute and a half, just until it started to perfume. We don't want to burn those. And the same thing goes for our red Swiss char stems as well. We want to cook those for about a minute and a half, two minutes, sauteing them to little to no color on them, just softening them up. Okay, and we have Dr. Dovek who chimed in. Uh, hi, Dr. Dovek. Pan, pan sear tuna is the best. Yes, it is. Love it. Um, and thank you, Summer. Summer is our nurse practitioner over at Comp. And Andrea, thanks for tuning in, guys. And I noticed that you're using tongs. I am. So usually I, I like to use like a spoon. What's with the tongs? Uh, it's, it's an old chef thing. Yeah. I got, I got to say it. I like it's, that. It's like an extension of my hands. You know, it looks I'm, just, very, it looks I'm so used to it. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, you can do so much, so much with them. You know, you don't have to get as close to the yeah. pan. Yeah. Um, but then just give it a quick shake. What you want to do too, when you shake the pan, not only is it aesthetically pleasing, it makes you look like you know what you're doing, eh? but also... <laughs> What it does is it spreads out your food in your pan mm. so it's more evenly distributed, which means it'll cook more evenly. Very, very important. Little tricks of the trade for you. Yes, and Dr. Dovek did ask how many ounces um, of tuna are, are we supposed to eat at once. And um, like we mentioned before, three to four ounces. Um, this, actually, that cut is four ounces, you said? Four ounces. So if you are measuring your um, meat at home, you can think of it this way. One ounce equals about seven grams of protein, okay? Um, so then you get the three to four ounces is about 20 to 30 grams of protein. So it's a good rule of thumb. Absolutely. There you go. Yep. Thank you, Jenna. Okay. So we also added our Swiss char leaves to the pan next. We're just going to wilt them down, saute them. So you can see I added a little bit more fat to the pan again. Don't worry about it. looks a little overloaded right now, the pan does. That's all right. This is going to certainly start to wilt down. And um, by the way, this Swiss chard has about 13 different antioxidants in it. That's um, basically from the phytonutrients, you know, those deep green and red colors that you see there. So um, it is recommended that you get about, um, have about one cup, two to three times a week of this particular type of veggie. So it's the deep greens, spinach, and even beets. Love beets. Yum. Love, Very love, earthy. love beets. Okay, we have a couple other people that joined us. Hello. Hi, everybody. How's everybody out there tonight? Hope you're hungry. <laughs> All right, so while we wilt this Swiss char down, we are going to start searing. So, real quick, pan searing. Pan searing happens over high heat with very little fat. When I say fat, I'm referring to the type of fat I'm using in the pan. So fat is a broad term. It's talking about butter. It's talking about oils. Very, very important to note. Mm -hmm. Good. 
Good. So when I say fat, I'm looking at the healthy fat, the polyunsaturated fat that I get from extra virgin olive oil. So, for searing, we're going to take our tuna. You're going to start to see some smoke. What you want to do is you want to lay it, when you lay it in the pan, make sure I get right in front of the camera here. When you lay it in the pan, you don't want to drop it straight in. It's going to splash back. It's not going to be well. What you want to do is you want to lay it, start here, and then just slowly let it down into the pan. Very, very important. We're going to put this guy in. That's what you want to listen for. You want to listen for that, that sear. You're going to start seeing some smoke in a second, guys. That's okay. Just turn on your fan at home. And um, I recently learned that the searing itself on the tuna actually breaks down some of those, um, some of the proteins and turns them into peptides, which also have an anti uh, antioxidant effect. Um, they're called, I forgot what they're called. They're, um, oh, they're just called peptides. Um, and they come out when you sear the, um, the tuna. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, you get it's, extra it's, from searing. Exactly. It's really great how food changes when you cook it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be searing our tuna media, uh, to uh, rare. This looks gorgeous. Thank you. There we go. So see here, everybody? This is what we're looking for. See that protein starting to brown there? That's a Maillard reaction in happening. That protein is browning. That's exactly what you want. Mike, you got a lot of fans. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Looking good. Thank you. you thank you awesome. so much for tuning in. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Mike is the man. Oh, thanks. It's probably my favorite. All right. So this is what we're looking for for our Swiss char right here. Beautiful. You can see it's wilted down. It's not burnt. Properly sautéed. Sautéed, remember, means little or no color. Tuna's looking good too. The tuna's not going to take long, everybody. The tuna's going to be really, really quick. And the amazing thing about this that Mike and I were discussing before, um, before we began is that you can all do this at home. You know, I know exactly. a lot of you are so busy running around, um, but look at how quick that just took. You know, and even if you prep the veggies, you know, the night before, have them in Tupperware, you're ready to go when you get home from work. And let Very hot pans, hot. yeah, let hot pans rest. Rule number one: let Do hot pans touch. rest. Use You'll see. Towel. I keep this. I keep the. So I keep the side towel in my hand as I grab pan. Never, never with a bare hand, guys. You'll do it once. <laughs> and never. Only again. once. All right. So we are going to start plating. Yeah, please. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sous chef. All right, exactly. start plating here. So we've got our sautéed Swiss char. All we're going to do, everybody, we're going to go right in the middle of our plate here. Pick it up, let a little bit of that excess oil drain off. We're going to go right in the middle of our plate like so. Pile nice and high. Again, same thing here. Let some of the excess oil drain off. Pile nice and high. Sit right here. There we are. Yep, that's, that's exactly. Yep. Yeah. So I am cutting this tuna on a bias. Does it matter if you cut with the grain or against the grain of those like lines? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter as much. No, it doesn't okay. matter as much for fish as mm -hmm. it would with meat, because mm. that's actually the muscle fiber is what uh. that grain is. So for a piece of meat, you want to cut it typically against the grain, because those muscle fibers are longer. And so if they're shorter, it's going to taste. Uh, it's not gonna be. It's gonna be more tender. All right, let's pick this guy up. Beautiful. Look at that. So perfect. Pull one here. All right, and to finish this dish, what we're gonna do? We're gonna take our lime. You wanna roll your lime beforehand. Rolling the lime beforehand will help to break up the flesh of the fruit. Will make it easier to squeeze. The lime is good because it add a little bit of natural acidity to the dish at the very end of brightening up the dish. So it's going to go right over top here like so. One more right over top. And I'm going to add a little bit more 
extra virgin olive oil here, just a touch, nothing crazy. Jenna, if you would, uh, if you would yes, do the honors. I would. Do a little taste. I would love to. Thank you. Thank you. Here you are. And um, our list, our, our watchers, our viewers, um, Hi, everyone. Are, are wondering where we're going to post this recipe. Ah, that is a great question. Uh, you'll be able to find it on the GBMC page. Uh, you'll also be able to find it on the Sleeve Chef page as well. Okay, I'm going to yes. take... Let's do a little taster, shall yes, we? Yes, I'm going to take a small bite. Remember yes. we talked about that in class, guys? All right. Mmm. 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 Delicious. Perfect. They say don't talk with your mouth full, but I'm sorry, I got to. Mmm. Fork down in between bites. Exactly. Mmm. Mmm. And this is nice because usually sometimes I feel like Swiss chard gets a little earthy when I'm cooking it. But the way that you did it, when you cut it up into those small pieces, it really kind of cooked the whole thing Thank so it didn't yeah. have that earthy yep. feeling. Exactly. So what we, the reason we cut those up into smaller pieces is because it allows it to cook more evenly mm -hmm. and you don't get that big bite. Because the stems of Swiss chard, if you cut them larger, they tend to be a little bitter. Yeah. So that's what we get. We cut a little smaller and we saute it. We help remove some of that bitterness from the uh, stems. Okay. Okay, good. All right, so hey, let's... Uh, this let's, is so good. Thank you so much. Yeah, Okay, let's... so let's pose some... Um, this is open. You guys can ask any questions that you want. I have my phone on me. So um, if you don't... If you, if you do have any questions, you can definitely um, talk. But um, what we learned tonight is that about three to four ounces of protein um, is good. You know, that's about what you want to stick to per meal. And we have about three to four, some people do five meals a day. So if you're doing those smaller five meals a day, then you wanna watch how much protein you're getting. You don't wanna go over, like too much over 100 because then you might not be burning all those calories, right? Um, and we also learned that um, we need deep leafy greens in our diet. Um, these give us really beneficial vitamins and minerals. Um, what else? By the way, um, the deep leafy greens are very high in vitamin K. So if you are on any like Coumadin regimen, Warfarin, you really want to make sure that you're doing, um, that you're eating these deep leafy greens con consistently every day, okay, or none at all, because that could interfere with your warf Warfarin or Coumadin, okay? So that's my only concern with the deep leafy greens. They're, they are an excellent source though of vitamin E, C, and A, okay? All right, let's see, have we gotten any questions? Jenna and okay. I are ready. We are ready for your question. Um, what else? I, I also think it's important um, to, to get um, veggies during the day. You know, how do we incorporate more veggies into our diet? So um, we were talking about like how some people like dive right in and they try like the cauliflower pizza, the cauliflower right. mash, the spaghetti squash, um, you know, zucchini noodles, because we are trying to like kind of cut back on those starches, exactly. you know, and make sure that we get like the protein instead of the starches. So we um, fill up on that and we meet our protein goals. Um, so this is a perfect dish to cook at home, but um, the Sleeve Chef has a ton of other dishes that, have, uh, that are packed with veggies. So you should definitely check out his page. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. we are on Facebook, The Sleeve Chef. You can find us online, thesleevechef.com. And then we are also on Instagram, Sleeve Chef in MD. Yeah. I would also uh, yeah, note too, on. guys, that one of the things that really helped me when I was first starting out uh, and I was acclimating to the new diet is using the smaller plates. Yes. It really, it really made a big difference for me psychologically. Because, you know, when I, when I was growing up, we'd always have to, you know, make sure you finish your food because otherwise you won't be able to have dessert. And the food was always on a much larger plate. So psychologically, I kept using big plates growing up, even in well into adulthood. And then one of the things I noticed is, is that if I started using smaller plates, I ate less. My portions got smaller. So it didn't look like it was just a giant, my food, didn't, my plate didn't look so empty. So I actually felt more full and psychologically from using these smaller plates. I think that's a really good idea. I, I probably three times a day, I'll hear from patients that um, that they feel like they have to finish their plate. They're afraid to like throw out food that's not part of what they do. Um, and that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. So yeah. trying out the smaller plates is fabulous. I did get one question. Sure. Um, one, of, one of our folks are um, on the no starch phase. 
um, right before you know surgery. Right before surgery. Um, oh, yeah. She's a bit anemic. She loves beets, but are they starchy? Beets are not starchy in our book. Okay. So the only veggies um, in our mindset right now that are really starchy are corn, peas, potatoes, sweet potatoes, or really any kind of potatoes, um, and actually beans. And I know a lot of people think, okay, well, beans are healthy. You're going to hear a lot of things that um, are traditionally healthy. I mean, potatoes are healthy, right? They have potassium, fiber, but they are considered starch in the way that they break down in our body. Right. So um, beets are not considered part of the starchy veg vegetable group. Now, with beans, I do want to let you guys know, um, yes, they are starchy. Yes, they are hard to break down in your stomach and in your intestines. But guess what? They're also not a complete protein. So everyone <laughs> thinks, oh, they're high in protein. They are a good protein source, but only if you pair them with rice. And what's rice? It's a starch. Okay. So, um, great question. Um, you can certainly get some iron from, um, from lean beef, yeah. actually. Lean That's beef a is fabulous. Yep, I was gonna say lean beef is Fabulous a great sauce. way to go. Uh, of one note on ground beef and, and just ground, you know, uh, uh, meat in general, everyone, is that you may see like 85, 15, uh, 80, 20, 93, 10, or, you know, 103 percent, everybody, 93, <laughs> 7. So what they're referring to is that's a ratio of meat to fat. So when they grind the beef, they're using 80 percent muscle and 20 percent fat or 93% muscle and 7% fat. So the higher that first number is, the more lean it is. And less fat, more, you know, if less fat, it'll be better for you. You can also have, you know, bison's a great source of protein as well. Mm. Another lean, uh, lean meat. And you can cook that just like. Exactly, you can, yeah. you can cook ground bison, you can use it in chili, you can use it just like you cook a hamburger. Uh, if you wanna make a bolognese sauce, you can use it there too. Mm. Really, anywhere you see ground beef, you can use ground bison. Okay, cool. And, um, yeah. Oh, we have a question. Mike, do you do weekly meal prep? Ooh, that, that's actually, that's a great question. So, I actually, um, I meal prep in the sense that I figure out what I'm going to, I design my menu around my shopping on a Sunday. Mm. I do not... I do meal prep, so um, by that I mean I will actually cook my dinner. I'll purposely buy enough, usually about a pound of food, a uh, pound of meat, you know, protein, and I'll eat four ounces. My wife and I will split it, and we'll split eight ounces, so we'll each have four ounces, and then we'll have lunch the next day will be that protein. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my meal prep. I tend not to go too far out um, as the, you know, the quality of the food can deteriorate yeah. over time. What about, so you, the, what about freezing? Do you freeze your food ever? Uh, some of it I do, you yeah. know, like usually before I cook it. Mm -hmm. um, you can freeze, you know, like meatballs will freeze really well. Uh, hamburgers will freeze really well. I don't recommend holding them for too long. Yeah. Usually it's, it, you're going to get a better quality. It's going to be more nutritious the sooner you eat it from a cooking, uh, after it's cooked. Mm. So meal prepping is a great way to go. I always like to say it's, you know, it's your journey. Do what works for you. Yeah. That's really the key key message I like to give people. I have a question that a lot of people ask me. Sure. How do you and how does your wife, you know, deal with your amount of, that you're eating and what you're cooking and these changes right. in your diet? Right. So that that's a great question. Uh, you know, initially it was uh, it was a little challenging, you know, because we were eating different portion sizes. Um, but she being, you know, incredibly supportive and wonderful. Uh, and, and, you know, with me doing the cooking, we were able to uh, uh, find a, a parity there and, you know, uh, be able to eat that same four ounce portion. You know, it's just a lot of, you know, lean proteins and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she loves spicy food, loves, you know, Indian food, uh, Thai food, just spicy, spicy food. Yeah. So we found like as, as I progressed through uh, the stages and incorporated more food into my diet, we, you know, she would make chicken curry, for example, mm -hmm. that was delicious. I mean, just, just it, was, it was healthy, it was delicious, it was great. And so we were able to find, uh, and for the chicken curry, instead of rice, guys, what we used is we used uh, um, pureed cauliflower. So you basically take a couple of heads, you take a cauliflower, you chop it down, put it into a food processor mm -hmm. and blitz it, and that's how you make that cauliflower rice. 
Very, very, very simple. Simple, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and I know that some of You could use that. Them. And, don't, and the other thing is, too, when you're cooking it, saute it. You can't cook it like you would regular rice. You're not going to bring it water to a boil, drop it in, and have it cooked that way. Mm, okay, that's, so a, that's really it, good to know. Cook actually. it in the pan. Yeah. You don't want to cook it like you cook traditional rice. That's that's really good to know. What about steaming it though? Can you just steam like, steam exactly? It? Yeah. You can steam it too. Okay. That's that's a great point. Yeah, you can steam it and as then well. just put whatever you want over yeah. it, like yep. you would with regular rice. But I find that yeah. the, that you know the sort of exactly yeah. Is, so, sauteing yeah. it adds a bit more flavor to it. Yeah. Uh, a bit more complexity to it. Yeah. Uh, and then also from a from a you know a, a spouse standpoint too, you know. It, one of the things I love about doing these events is is demystifying cooking. After surgery, you can eat well. You and your you and your partner can eat well. There's so much great food available to us post surgery mm -hmm. that's out there that you can eat well. You can do it. Don't be afraid of it. There's tons of support. Check out the Comp Support Group page. Check out GBMC's page. Jana's got all of your questions as far as dietary uh, needs goes. Mm -hmm. and, all and, uh, and honestly, just having fun with it, exactly. too. And I can definitely, and I always tell my patients that I've seen, and you know that I tell you this, you need motivation, you just let me know. Right. I got all the motivation for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have another question. What are your thoughts on adding seasoning and spices to food? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Do it. Okay, do Absolutely it. do yeah. it. <laughs> but make sure that, that you know, spices are a great way to enhance the flavor of a food, of food, without adding a lot of calories to it, that's the key thing to know. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not saying pack the salt in because you want to be careful of your sodium content. Right. But you can still add a little bit of salt and pepper to season your meat, just like we did here with our tuna. Yeah. And by the way, guidelines for sodium: if you are on a low salt diet because you have any cardiovascular issues, high blood pressure, um, you want to stick to 1,500 milligrams per day. Okay. Um, and you don't really want to go too much over that. And a lot of it is like, you know, hidden salts like right. you were talking That's... about. But you can actually look at your um, nutrition label, find where it says sodium, and anything under 140 milligrams is a low sodium, per serving by the way, anything under 140 milligrams is a low sodium food. Anything over 300 is a high sodium food, okay? And then if you're just an average American, no high blood pressure, you want to stick to under 2,300 milligrams. So there still is a limit. Yep. And, and, and yeah. Yep. So uh, to that point, too, that's a great point, Jenna, about the sodium, is that there, there's hidden sodium, right? There's hidden food, there's hidden sodium in a lot of processed food. So I like to think about it this way. I used to love to go to McDonald's post, uh, pre-surgery. I loved it. I'd go, I'd get a couple quarter pounder with cheese. It was delicious. I loved it. I'd spend four or five dollars on that item, right? What I could do now is I could go to the store, I could spend four or five dollars on a pound of ground beef. Mm -hmm. I know what's going in it. Those those, you know, processed hamburgers from McDonald's have got a boatload of sodium. They do. They're just, and sugar, by the way. And that's why they taste so good. Because it's got so much hidden sodium in them. Yeah. So by by being able to control what you're eating, and buying fresh food and cooking fresh food, you really are able to, uh, uh, you know, control what you put in your body and control how much sodium you intake. Mm -hmm. We have a question about the the cauliflower rice. Mm -hmm. She wants to know if you can pan fry it, and I think that's Absolutely. what you meant by saute, that's, right? Yep, that's yeah. correct. Okay. That's so pan, the difference between pan frying and sautéing is actually the amount of oil you add to the pan. Mm. That's the key. Important. Yes. Okay. And remember, that's that's the extra virgin olive oil or olive oil. Okay, good. Um, okay, we got our salt yep. rules. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, didn't they used to like, uh, wasn't salt used to be like a huge commodity back in Absolutely. the day? Absolutely. Salt I mean, was a method of preservation. Yeah. Salt can do many things. But, you know, as an average American going to, you know, going out to eat, um, going grocery shopping, going in those middle aisles, not the perimeter of the grocery store, but those middle aisles, you got a lot of sodium there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. So you just have to watch, okay? Um, you know, it's not just about the calories. It's not just about the protein. It's also about other nutrients that you're not maybe not thinking about, right. you know? exactly. And also, remember when we talk about not drinking with your meals while you're eating? If you have lower sodium in your meals, you won't be as thirsty. Okay, so all of that chew, chew, chewing, lower sodium, you won't have, um, you won't want to actually drink during your meals. That's and a you'll great get point. Used to it. Yeah. Yep, that's a great point. Well, I think 
I think we are just about out of time, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Jenna and I had a great time. Yes, thank the wonderful, you. The wonderful Jenna Wolf, Jenna Wolf RD on Facebook. You know her. <laughs> and um, yeah, you can certainly reach out to me. Reach out to Mike with any and all questions. We will be posting the recipe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. We really enjoyed it. Thank you much for tuning in. Please tell your friends. We will see you again soon. All right. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Good night, everybody.